What's going on guys? Today I'm doing a Connor Bedard career simulation in NHL 24. I figure right now he's out with the injury, so we can't watch him on the ice. Why not watch him in the game? I will say one really interesting thing I think about Bedard is the fact that until he got injured, he was tearing it up, 33 points in 39 games. Now, even though he was doing really well, it's been reported he'll miss another six weeks. And I think if that's the case, the good chance he'll actually miss the Calder. The good news for Bedard is there's been a couple other generational players that have not won the Calder trophy. I'm talking Sidney Crosby and Connor McDavid. So I feel like Connor Bedard joining that group might not be too bad for his career. I feel like they sacrificed the Calder trophy to win everything else but in game here guys we're gonna see exactly what happens as you can see because Bedard got injured in real life I had to make sure to keep injuries on it and see how healthy Bedard can stay throughout his career and now for this video guys I take it over as my team the Detroit Red Wings but everything's automated in terms of players signings adding the line so I shouldn't have any influence on the sim now look at the Blackhawks team here you can see Bedard already penciled in 1c 85 overall to start off the sim high franchise potential the dude's a beast already has that shock and odd zone ability bunch of other x factors there ankle breaker for the nasty moves you got make it snappy puck and a string snipe of course has to have skilled up there looking at his attributes you can see really good puck skills and shot defensively physically not the greatest but he's like an all offense player they got him on the first line there between hall and bovillier look at the rest of the team it's not great so not only am i curious to see how bedard does but i'm also curious to see how the aigm kind of builds this blackhawks team around him you can see defensively they're pretty weak same with goal, they got Sarblom and Mrazic. So we'll get started here, guys, and see whether or not Bedard can be one of the all-time greats. Before we get started with the simulation, guys, we wouldn't mind leaving a thumbs up on this video. It really helps me out. All right, guys, so I just finished simming through the first season. As you can see there, the Islanders jumped from 9-1 to one to get Macklin Celebrini, which is pretty nuts. Blackhawks finished second last in the NHL. They dropped to four. The Flyers actually finished last, which kind of shows you how good of a job Torrell is doing in real life. The Rangers there won the Stanley Cup. Next year, we're taking a look at Bedard's stats. As you can see, pretty much the only player on the team doing anything. He was just under point per game there with 80 and 81. So apparently only missed one game, minus eight. Next closest there in points was Hall 58. Korczynski, though, putting up 50. Might be a nice sign from Bedard. Gonna have a you know, future number defenseman feeding him the puck. After one year, he's an 87 overall now. So he's only gone up by two, but I'm sure by the end of the summer, that'll be changed. Also, you guys will take a quick look at the awards. Rangers actually cleaned up winning the Stanley Cup and the President's Trophy. Individually here, McKinnon, R. Ross, good chance to win that in real life. Pretty cool. P.D. Hart, Fox there, James Norris. I'm mainly looking to see. Yeah, there you go. Bedard does win the Calder Trophy. So like I said, if he can get back healthy sooner rather than later, he could win that in real life. But if he stays out for an extended period of time, I think I'm uh, probably going to lose it to Faber. All right, guys, so at the start of year two, and as you can see there, Connor Bedard's only an 88. I say only an 88 because... He just put up a point per game his rookie season, has high franchise potential. I honestly thought he would have grown a little bit more than that. Now they still have Taylor Hall playing on his left wing, but they've actually signed Blake Wheeler there to play on his right wing. Very interesting. Um, doesn't really look like the Blackhawks have signed anybody else in terms of forwards. Defensively, Korchinski now at 89. They brought in Bortuzzo, Giertano. Quite interesting. Goal time, they've also brought, wow, they brought in two new goalies. Varlamov there and Vladosh. That's really interesting because I made sure to add the extension for Mrazic, which means I must have traded him. And they've also got Gosses Bear Scratch there. I feel like he's definitely better than Bertuzzo or Rude Riedel, but whatever. Also, I figured I'd show you guys special teams. As you can see there, Bedard is on power play one, as you might expect. And I just looked through the PKs. They do not have him playing on the penalty kills, which kind of makes sense. They probably don't want him to get too tired. So let's see how Bedard does here in year two. And I just looked into our first game against the Blackhawks this season, guys. Curious to see if Bedard got a letter yet, and he has not, which I honestly think is pretty surprising. I'm almost positive we'll be ready to see this time next year also too, you can see up to a 90 overall already at the midway point of the season so dude's becoming a beast wow and look at this guys we're at the 2025 draft the vancouver canucks there jump from six to one to pick first overall probably taking james hagens could also take michael misa porter martone and you can see the blackhawks had a much better season finishing 10th last there also to calgary apparently trade their first round picks to montreal while they should be rebuilding so I don't really know about that uh, decision by them, but we'll go take a look at Bedard next year. As you guys can see, he had 90 points, 82 games, so a very solid season again. Plus 18 this year, so much better plus minus. Now 93 overall, and I think he can get his extension at the start of next season, so the Blackhawks are definitely going to have to pay him. And in terms of the awards here, guys, the Devils actually won the Stanley Cup. Individually here, McKinnon, Art Ross Trophy, back-to-back -back years. Oh my. I also got the heart there. McCarr, James Norris, just the year of the Avs. Hughes, though, Lady Bing. Benson didn't make the NHL apparently last year, but this year he does. Gets the Calder to fully con Smythe. I'm just wondering, did Bedard get anything? Ducks coach back-to-back -back Jack Adams. That literally never happens. Bedard probably won't win a Selkie trophy, and yeah, he doesn't get anything there. So I feel like the only trophy he had a real shot this year was probably the Lady Bing. All right, guys, so let's start of the third season. Con Bedard's contract year, and this Blackhawks team is looking pretty interesting. They got Brad Marchand playing first line left wing. Still 85 overall with a bunch of X-Factors, even at 37 years old. I'm curious to see... He put up 50 points last year, actually was out for a bit, so about a point per game the year before that, 67. Looks like they'd be a pretty good player still. Him on the line with Bedard and Demidov could be nasty. Demidov, they actually drafted fourth overall 2024. He has 79. 
bunch of X factors. Curious to see how that first line does. They also signed Paul Mary there. They're playing him with Nazar and Reichel in the second line. A really cool third line here. Taylor Hall reunited with Jordan Everly. I think that's honestly kind of awesome. Fourth line though, kind of something strange. Johnson there, Hoffman, Kurashev. Hoffman's the only one that's a true winger. Kurashev and Johnson both can play center yet. They got them on the wing. Just kind of classic EA roster building. Korczynski there, now 90 overall. Looking like that number defenseman Bedard needs. The rest of the defense there isn't too bad. Still though, Gosses Bear is scratched for whatever reason. And then goaltenders here. Comiso is actually now the starter, 84 overall. Also, you guys, Connor Bedard did already sign an extension. $10 million for eight years. In real life, I think he's going to get at least, you know, 13, 14 million. $10 million for him is dirt cheap. Korczynski there as well. Signed a big extension, 8.7 for six. Also kind of funny, the Blackhawks currently have Seth Jones on the block. So we'll see how this team does. Bedard's trade value there, of course, still the max. Will probably be the max for this entire video. Wow, look at this, guys. Two years after winning the Stanley Cup, the Rangers are picking first overall. And that means they're going to get Gavin McKenna. Are you kidding me? Kind of like when they got Lafreniere. I feel like they really don't need a first overall pick. Chicago there drops from six to seven. So still missing the playoffs. Lightning there on the cup. And I look at Connor Bedard here, you can see he had 45 goals and 43 assists for 88 points on the year. He was actually a dash player again, minus five. Demidov though did well with him, 66 points. Bedard still 93 overall there. So I feel like he'll end up being at least a 95. And in terms of the awards here, guys, Cole Caulfield won the Art Ross Trophy. Okay. Jack Hughes, the heart. Caulfield there also got the Lady Bing. Again, probably the only trophy Bedard could actually win. But I'll just quickly check it all. Oh, actually, what? Connor Bedard? With the Selkie. I said how he couldn't even win that, and he gets it in his third year. Let's go take a quick look at his uh, defensive stats. So he's got the sniper player type, four star defense there, 890 awareness, 88 stick check. That is so surprising to see him get that. The physical's, you know, not the greatest. I wonder if it has to do with the fact he was 57% in the faceoff circle, which is honestly ridiculous, especially since he only had 87 faceoffs. Like, that is so, so good. Takeaways as well, 138. Honestly, yeah, I could see why he won the Selkie. All right, guys, we're on the start of the fourth season. As you can see, Bedard there is still 93 overall. He now has Lucas Reichel on his left wing. Demidov there is still on his right wing. And I actually went in and changed a couple of Bedard's X factors just to give them a bit more variety. So I took off Ankle Breaker and Schneid and added in Judy backhand and tape to tape. Obviously, he's a very good playmaker as well. And again, with this being his fourth season, we're at the start of his $10 million eight year deal. I feel like he'll probably be the Blackhawks for the next eight years because of that. Kershaw's now an 87. Very interesting. Blackhawks team still doesn't look amazing. Defensively, they really haven't gotten much better. Goaltending comments is now at 85. I feel like they should be able to build a much better team around Bedard than they have so far, but we'll see if this is the first year they make the playoffs. And now this is kind of crazy to me, guys. We're in year four, and as you can see, Kyber Dard still isn't wearing a letter for the Blackhawks. All right, guys, with the end of year four, San Jose Sharks are picking first overall. Blackhawks still not a good team. As you can see, they pick fifth. So again, bottom five for them is pretty crazy. They just can't seem to build this team around Bedard. Imagine if they didn't even have him. Montreal Canadiens. Winning a Stanley Cup there. So that'd be their first Stanley Cup since 1993. First Canadian team to win a cup since 1993. So at this point in the game, that'd be like 34 years, which is pretty crazy. Look at the rest of the awards here. Tage Thompson taking home Art Ross in the heart. McCarr there, James Norris. Calder there was the Michael Misu, got drafted by Vancouver. Pretty crazy they were able to land him. Doc at the con, Smythe. Bedard does not get anything because... No Selkie for him or the Razor Shard. And look at this, guys. Bedard actually slowed down a bit this season. 79 points there, 81 games. Had more assists than goals, I think, for the first time in this sim, which I think is a bit more realistic, honestly, for him. He actually dropped a rating as well by one from 93 to 92. So, like I was saying, they really need to figure it out, get some players, you know, built around him. And look at this. They finally gave Gossespierre some ice time. He put up 37 points. Like, imagine if they did that earlier. All right, guys. So, now the start of year five. Comrade there's 92 overall. Reichel Demidov still on his wings. You got Gabe Velarde on the Blackhawks now. Frank is up to an 88. Kershaw still 87. This Birdchild guy, 82 medium late. They drafted 7th overall 2026. I think Gavin McKenna probably would have been a lot nicer with this team, but still, top nine's actually looking solid. Ryan Hartman's there. Ledwinski, 85. Looking at the defense here. They brought in this dude, Bomadine. Hopefully I said that right. 10th overall pick, 2025. They've actually got all 80 pluses now. Goaltending comps was 85. I think this could be the first year they actually make the playoffs. All right, guys, so at the end of the fifth season, as you can see, the Boston Dynasty looks to be over. They're picking first overall. And Chicago Blackhawks, they're picking ninth. So still cannot make the playoffs, which is pretty hilarious. Devils, though, with their second Stanley Cup in this video. Wow, and look at this, guys. Demidov outscored Connor Bedard. He actually had five more goals, one less assist, with a plus 10. Bedard there, 89. Demidov, 93. Let's see. Bedard, though, is back up to a 93. So maybe he'll start to get going here. 
And so looking at the awards now, guys, Connor McDavid finally back to win the Yard Rush Trophy. That's the first one of this video. Luke Hughes with James Norris. Oh my gosh. And a Lady Bang. The Hughes brothers just dominating. Kalen Lynn with a Calder Trophy. He's actually super surprised. I'm not sure if I've ever seen that. Brad there, the Con Smythe. Bennington on the Leafs. William Jennings. Okay. Nolan Allen, one of our players. Bill Masterton. Not Bedard winning an award, but it is something. Robert Thomas there, Selkie. Bedard unfortunately hasn't won it again, but maybe he will. And Richard Shard here actually goes to Michkov. Okay, so that's something Bedard hasn't won yet, but I'm sure he will win at least one. All right, guys, let's start the sixth season. Bedard's still playing that first line center role between Lucas Reichel and Ivan Demidov. You got this Scantleberry guy, second line, 84 overall, medium lead. They drafted him fifth overall last year. That looks like a pretty good player playing with Zard and that Birdchild dude. I mean, eventually you'd think this team's gonna make the playoffs. Defensively, they lost Seth Jones. They must have traded him, maybe even bought him out. Uh, they still have all 80 pluses. Combs are there, still the goalie. Interesting. All right, guys, so year six is in the books. The Islanders are actually picking first overall again. The Blackhawks are the fifth overall pick. I think this is like the third or fourth time they got a top five. Minnesota Wild there winning the Stanley Cup. Honestly, a bit surprised by that. I'm also thinking the Blackhawks have made the playoffs in six seasons with Bedard. Like, is he going to start to ask for a trade? Although, having said that, Korczynski put up a point per game as a D-man, but Dard, they're only 72. I mean, his line also just kind of slowed down a bit. The Demidov, 66. Reichel only at 45. Very interesting to see. But Dard, 34 goals, 30 assists, dash 7. He's actually dropped to 91 overall. Lucky for him, still only 23 with high franchise potential. And now in terms of the awards here, guys, Jeff Skinner won the Art Rush Trophy. What the heck is going on? I mean, all right, good for him. That's something you don't see all the time. Heart Mortal Trophy also goes for him. Tage Thompson won at the two years prior, so I'm guessing he just fed off Tage Thompson on that first line. Luke Hughes back to back James Norris's. Jeff Skinner also got the Lady Bang. Isn't Jeff Skinner like 35 at this point? That is crazy. Just looking to see if Adara got anything. Leo Carlson there getting a Selkie. It's another young stud player. Skinner also got the Ted Lindsay and the Marisha Shard. What the heck? Wow, guys, look at this. Jeff Skinner put up 120 points at 37 years old. Zach Benson, I think, was actually. Playing on his line there, put up 117. That is ridiculous. All right, guys, so now let's start the seventh season. As you can see, Bedard's gone down to 91 overall. Demidov, the one who's arriving, is at 90. I actually saw Demidov's getting paid more than Bedard, 12 million bucks the next six years. Was even turn it around. He's got Birdshot on his left wing now. He's a total playmaker. Uh, I mean, look at this team. Like, they got some good players coming through. They've been bad for quite a bit. Korchinski there's a 91. They got Adam Pellick signed to the team now. Goaltending, they're still rocking, comma, so let's see how they do. And check this out, guys. Looking to see if Bedard finally had a letter. And I noticed that Kevin Korchinski is actually wearing the C for the Blackhawks. I feel like there's 0% of that happening. Probably could end up wearing an A, but Bedard's definitely getting that C. Hopefully next year, if he's back to being the highest rated player, we'll see whether or not they did give him a letter. Check out the draft letter results, guys. Ottawa picking first overall there. You can see we're actually picking 12th. So I think that's the best the Blackhawks have done yet. Unfortunately, still no playoffs for Bedard. Avalanche there, we know they're Stanley Cup though. And Bedard's back to being the scoring leader on the team. 80 points there, 82 games, plus 19. So looks like that first line worked a lot better. Curious too, he's up to a 92 overall. We'll see whether or not he can get to that 95. Still has, you know, a few years left to grow. And looking at his stats right now, guys, one thing I find really interesting is the fact that he actually kind of did better the first few years than he has the past few years, aside from, you know, the 89 point season there. And I wonder if it has to do with the fact that there's now better players on his line that are also putting up points, kind of taking away goals from him. Like even look at the shots here. He's shooting the puck less, so just something interesting I'm finding. It looks like, you know, if you have a star player with no one else on the team, he's going to kind of take all the shots, I guess. And now in terms of the awards here, guys, Luke Hughes with the Art Rush Trophy. What the heck? Wow. Also wins the heart. Third straight James Norris. This guy is basically Nick Lidstrom. So some really interesting results here so far in the sim. Devin Levi there is a beast at goalie. Blackhawks signed Ivan Provorov. I feel like I missed that. I actually want to build a Master Trophy with us. That's our second one. Uh, Bedard there, another Selkie Trophy, his second in five years. We get a couple of uh, awards this year. Maybe that's a good sign of playoffs coming. All right, guys, so that's right, year eight. As you can see, Bedard there, back to 92 overall. And he still has Birdchild, Demidov on his wings. In case I haven't showed you guys the attributes lately, as you can see, Bedard's face-off stats kind of nuts now. 94. Puck skills, of course, five stars. Same with the senses. 99 offense awareness. Poise is 96. Five-star shot. Skating. Even physical three and a half. Doesn't look too bad. Decent strength there. Just the restiness and body check are pretty low. Look at the rest of this Blackhawks team. I mean, maybe not as much depth of the four, but defensively, wow. They signed Shea Theodore, 89 overall. That's a nuts top pair. I wonder, honestly, if they trade for Provera at the deadline. I just don't remember him being on the team at all. You got this guy here, 85. Goaltending, still got Comso starting. Even Ball there, back it up to 85. This team, like I said, they're getting better for sure. We'll see how they do this season. All right, guys, a lot of results are in. Rangers here picking first overall again. Are you kidding me? Like, how lucky can you get? 
Blackhawks, unfortunately, still missed the playoffs. They're picking 10th. I'm not really sure, like, what's going on. I did look at it. I think the Central Division's kind of tough, but still, really no excuse when you got Connor Bedard on the team, especially at that $10 million team-friendly contract. As you guys can see here, he had 79 points this season, so just under point per game. Demidov actually had a bit more there, 87. Bedard, though, still 92. What's Demidov up to? He's a 91 now, so, I mean, you'd think that'd be a good duel. Maybe the fact that they're both snipers, they're kind of taking the puck from each other. Birdshot, here's a playmaker. You can see rarely scoring at all, but tons of assists. In terms of the awards here, guys, the Tampa Bay Lightning actually won the Stanley Cup. Individually, Stutzler Ross Trophy. We'll see Luke Hughes, fourth straight James Norris. Oh my goodness. He basically just surpassed Quinn and is now the best Hughes brother. Like I said, literally Nick Lidstrom, I think, reincarnated. Do we have any awards this year? Uh, wow, Demidov, a Marisha Shard Trophy before Bedard got one. That's kind of nuts. And I found this kind of interesting, guys. Sebastian Aho here with the Lady Bing. 90 points, 6 penalty minutes. So he took 3 penalties all year. Compare that to Bedardo at 79 points, so 11 less. But he had 2 penalty minutes. He took 1 single penalty. I feel like he's definitely going to win that Lady Bang pretty soon. All right, guys. So since the start of the ninth season, I thought this was pretty funny. The Blackhawks can't afford to sign Birdchild. 91 overall there. You can see still an RFA. They've got less than half a million in cap space. And the reason for this is they decided to go and trade for William Nylander, making 11.5 million. He's... He's older, he's lower rated. I don't understand what the AIGM are thinking sometimes. So I wanted to share that with you guys because I was wondering like, what happened. Did they make a big trade? They did kind of make a big trade for Nylander, but it cost them, again, a better, younger player. So first line is now Scantleberry playing with Bedard and Demidov. Bedard's back up to being a 93. So I'm going to check and see if you got a letter as he's the highest rated player on the team again. You can see here his stats are still looking pretty ridiculous. Faceoffs are now 96. Bedard just became... An absolute beast in the face-off circle. I guess losing his first ever face-off to Cross, he really made him want to master that craft. Look at the defense here. You still got Korchinski. It looks like Theodore's now gone. It's okay. The few 81s are tough. Good goalie tandem. Still, though, like, I don't know. Is this team going to make the playoffs? Are they that much better? We'll see. And look at this, guys. It only took nine seasons, but Bedard finally has an A. I assume he's never going to get the C until Korchinski leaves or he goes to a new team. So I'll try and keep an eye on that. Wow, look at these lottery results, guys. National jumped from 5-1 to one via a pick they got from Washington. And then Seattle jumps from 12-2. to two. Also, too, you might notice no Blackhawks in the lottery. That's because they finally made the playoffs. You can see there the Anaheim Ducks actually won the Stanley Cup. That's who the Blackhawks lost to as well. And that's actually who the Blackhawks lost to in the second round. First round, they swept the Flames. So when I saw that, I thought, you know, maybe they could make a deep run here. But unfortunately for them, though, they ran into a pretty stacked Duck squad. Kind of funny, too, because the Ducks actually had the best odds of taking Bedard. So then beat him out before on a road to Stanley Cup, I think, is a bit of justice. Individual awards here. Jason Robertson with the Art Ross. Wow. Dylan Gunther Hart Trophy. Some very... Oh, my goodness. I've never seen Luke Hughes send this good. This guy is insane. <laughs> Five straight Norris trophies. I gotta go take a look at, like, his overall and stuff at this point. Leo Carlson, Con Smythe. Do we get any awards this season? I feel like we definitely probably should have got the Jack Adams at this point. It's been a while, but that's all right. So no awards there. Also, you guys, I totally skipped over retired stats for a second. As you can see, he's actually had his best season of his career. 97 points, 32 games, 42 goals, 55 assists, plus 21. He's actually 94 overall now, so he's gone up by one. Like I said, good chance to end up being at least a 95, maybe even higher. I just want to check. Has he done better than 97? I don't believe so. Yeah, that's his best season so far. Still has yet to hit the 100-point mark, though, which is kind of surprising. Wow, and look at this, guys. In the playoffs, he had 16 points in nine games, averaging, like, almost two points a game, basically doing everything he could to try and, you know, will this team further into the playoffs. And next year, guys, looking at Luke Hughes. He actually put up more points than Jack Hughes. Basically, all assists there. 98, though, as a D-man is crazy. 91 overall. Honestly, he should probably be higher rated after five straight Norris trophies. 99, 102, 93, 110, 91. Oh my goodness. Yeah, Luke Hughes is just a cheat code. All right, guys. So now let's start the 10th season. Connor Bedard, there you can see, is 94 overall. He's got Demidov on his right wing. He's a 93. Birdshaw, there's a 90. Scantleberry is a 90 as well. Reichel, 88. They brought Nylander back. Much cheaper, 4.2, which is why they could actually afford to sign Birdchild this season. As you can see, he got 10-3. So they literally could have done it last year. But, I mean, now they have both of them. So I guess it worked out. The rest of the forwards there, I mean, they got actually Brian Lambert on the fourth line, Thomas Bordello on the third. Definitely brought in some decent players. Defensively, wow. Korchinski's gone. Allen, Cole Hudson, though, top pair. He was actually drafted by the Devils, I'm guessing, with Luke Hughes being so dominant, they didn't really need him. Very interesting. So, Korchinski's lost. I'm not sure if he left in free agency or they trade him. That's definitely a big loss for this team. They did bring in Romanov there, but def defense definitely a lot worse. Ball and Guy in there, so they actually lost Comiso as well. 
I mean, we'll see. What does Hippodard have left? Two years at 10.2 before he's potentially gonna be like this massive free agent, which I think would honestly be pretty cool. Also, to you guys, I was looking at Bedard's actually playing the PK now. I feel like after you win a couple Selkie trophies, to not be playing the PK would be kind of dumb. And two, with Korchinski gone, does Bedard finally get the C a decade into his career with the Blackhawks? And he does. I mean, it took him long enough. Let's see if he pops off this first year as a captain. This is kind of funny, guys. The Toronto Maple Leafs are picking first overall again the first time since they got Matthews in 2016. It's 2033 now, so I mean, pretty good run. 17 years later, they're back at the bottom. Devils there with another Stanley Cup. You guys want to notice too in the draft lottery, the Blackhawks were not there. They made it back to the playoffs. Unfortunately, they actually lost the Sharks in round one. You can tell a bit of a change in the guard with them in the playoffs. The Coyotes, Blackhawks. Uh, even the Ducks, for that matter, of course, win the Stanley Cup last season. And I'll look at the Hawks here, guys. But Dart at 94 points. Still has yet to put 100 up. But, I mean, pretty solid season. It was a dash 9. I feel like he's hanging around. Should be having a 100-point season pretty soon. He's 27. So, you know, still has some good years left in him. And look at the awards next year, guys. Poltapov. I'm like 99% sure this is the made up, dude. Our Ross Trophy for the Sabres. They've had, honestly, a ton of luck in this sim. Finally! Luke Hughes doesn't win the James Norris. Kale McCarr gets it back from him. He's probably like so mad. But you know what? <laughs> he wins the Conn Smythe instead. I feel like, wow, Luke Hughes. I don't think I've ever seen a defenseman sim that well, especially him. Uh, let's see. Do we get an award here? Does not look like it. All right, Michka. That's his second Marie Richard, I think. But Dard still doesn't have one. All right, guys. So it's another start of the 11th season. As you can see, Bedard there still 94 overall, playing between Birdchild, Demidov on the first line. I think that top six is solid. Bomb of six, honestly, not too bad either. Defensively here, they're about what they were last year. Goaltending also pretty similar. So basically, they got to get lucky in terms of a playoff run, I think, if they want a Stanley Cup. But I think the interesting thing about this season is the fact that Bedard's on the last year of that big contract he signed. Will he go to free agency? Will he resign at the Blackhawks? Let's find out. All right, guys, so I'm going to show you the draft lottery this year. Again, the Blackhawks made the playoffs. They actually beat the Wild there in round one and seven. Unfortunately, they lost the Coyotes in the second round in six. So, Bedard's not made it past second round of the playoffs. Will he decide to leave Chicago in search of a Stanley Cup? I am very curious. And look at that. Just like real life on a contract year, he pops off. Finally breaks the 100-point mark with 110. Also, is one shy there, 60 goals, plus 26. Might be pushing 95 overall. And take a look at the awards here, guys. You can see the Hurricanes win the Stanley Cup. And Bedard gets his first Art Rush trophy. Wow, the 110 points was good enough. Also got the heart. Yeah, he wants to get paid. 10 million was not enough for him. Luke Hughes back to winning the James Norris. That's his sixth. That is just stupid. Bedard also got his first Lady Bing. Are you kidding me? So, yeah, he just completely cleaned up this year. He wants that check. Is he going to get it from Chicago or somebody else? You also got the Ted Lindsay and the Maurice Richard. What? So if you guys lost count, that's five awards for Dart. You got the Lady Bing, which I talked about him almost getting last season. Hart, Art Ross, Maurice Richard, and Ted Lindsay. Are you kidding me? I'll take a quick look here, guys, at the entire league. So Bedard had 10 more points in second place. Caulfield, definitely a lower scoring year. Like when McKinnon won it the first couple years, he had 120-something. Bedard also only had three penalty minutes. Most goals there, 59. Next closest, Caulfield, 49. So yeah, Bedard just... Honestly, dominated the league this season. All right, guys, it's the moment of truth. We're about to find out when Lampard Dart re signed the Chicago Blackhawks. And he did. Okay, still playing first line, starting there between Birdchild and Demidov. Still 94 overall. I thought maybe he'd jump up to a 95 after last season. He got signed to just under $13 million for six years. Again, I think underpaid. At 2034, he's still making less than Matthews just got signed for. I think Bedard probably should have made 13 plus on his first deal, 15 plus on this one. Although, he did just hit 100 plus points for the first time. He's a goal scoring machine. Pretty much every year he's good for 35 plus. I don't know. Maybe it's fair. You guys can let me know in the comments. So we'll see whether or not this was the right decision for him. Can he go and win a Stanley Cup with this team? They're looking about the same as they have looked the past, you know, four or five years. So let's see what happens. All right, guys, look at this. I'm showing you the draft lottery. As the Blackhawks just missed the playoffs this year. You can see there, uh, second best team to miss behind the Penguins. I guess after, you know, getting his big payday, maybe Bedard slowed down. We'll go take a look. Buffalo Sabres there actually won the Stanley Cup. I believe that's their first time doing so in this sim. And actually, no, Bedard still played really well. 98 points there. He was a dash three. I mean, again, this team might be cursed. I'm not sure why they're having such a hard time making the playoffs here. Actually, guys, I take it back. The Blackhawks got so unlucky this season. Three teams there in the Central with 88 points, and they lost in the tiebreaker to both of them. All three 40 wins, 34 losses, eight overtime losses. Like, that is insane. They had 33 regulation wins, but then the Wild and the Stars both had 34. Like, I don't think I've ever seen a three-way tie that close. Pretty crazy. So, uh, hopefully Bedard can get back into the playoffs next season. Now, 
in terms of the awards, Buffalo, Stanley Cup, and President's Trophy. Art Ross to Dylan Gunther, good for him. He also gets the heart there. Luke Hughes, literally having the best defensive sim I've ever seen. It's honestly insane to me. But Dar there though, back-to-back -back Lady Bangs, very, very cool. Take a look and see if he possibly won anything else this season. I wouldn't really expect it. He didn't. It was that kind of, honestly, this was the year of Dylan Gunther, apparently. All right, guys, so here we go at the start of the 13th season. As you can see here, a bit of a change up on the Blackhawks, but they're still the one seed. Birdchild still first line left wing. We now have Scantleberry on the right wing. Demidov nowhere to be seen. So I think he might have left in free agency. I don't really see them trading him away, especially when they're trying to compete for a playoff spot. Defensively, they definitely need some help. Losing Korchinski, no longer have the number one. Honestly, even the depth's not the greatest. Goalies, though, they're pretty good. This Robinson guy is mainly potential. Fifth round pick by the Flyers 2028. Wants to trade for him. Ball here they drafted second round 2026. So we'll see how this uh, Blackhawks team does. I really hope Bedard can at least win one Stanley Cup. All right, guys. So in the 13th season, the Blackhawks made the playoffs again. Unfortunately, first round exit the Minnesota Wild there. They lost 4-2. to two. The Sharks actually went on to win the Stanley Cup, which is kind of funny. That means... They rebuilt faster than Chicago without Connor Bedard, which honestly I'd say is pretty impressive. Bedard, though, did have another 100-point season, 101 to be exact, 57 goals, plus 24. I mean, the dude's definitely doing everything he can, like, especially these past five years. He's really been trying. Still only 94 overall. I wonder if it's because, you know, he didn't quite hit that 95 before he finished growing. Now he's going to have to have, like, a 130-point season or something to bump him up to that 95. Now look at the awards here, guys. You can see Wild there, President's Trophy. Michkov, Art Ross Trophy, okay. Hart Trophy, different guy on the Flyers. Brant Clark got the James Norris, not Luke Hughes for once. Do we take home anything here? Um, oh, Bedard, another Misha Shard. Okay, so I think him and Mishkov actually both have two at this point. It's a little Crosby versus Ovi action. All right, guys, so that's for the 14th season. Of course, Bedard's still the one C. I feel like he'll have to drop into at least like, you know, the mid 80s to lose this spot. 31 years old now, so I mean, in not too long, might be the twilight years of his career. He's got Birdchild, Scanterberry there on his two wings, both with zone abilities. So we'll see how that line does. Blackhawks' depth, honestly, isn't looking too great this year in terms of the offense. Even defensively, it looks pretty average. Goaltending here. Turco, I guess, will be the backup. Ball starter. Let's see if they can maybe make a Cinderella run. All right, guys. Flyers results are in. The first overall pick was actually traded. Seattle there jumps from 7-1 to one with the Winnipeg pick, which is kind of nuts. You might notice us at number 11. So... Finished 11th last in the NHL. This Blackhawks team can just not catch a break, it seems. And now looking at Connor Bedard this season, he had 91 points, which is pretty solid. Minus four, 78 games played. One thing I was actually thinking, I had injuries turned on, and like he really has not missed much time at all. Like four games this year, I think. Yeah, that's the most he's missed uh, since his rookie season, but I think it's pretty impressive being that healthy. And now I just looked, his durability is at 96. I think it started at, like 85 or something, so it's probably a big reason why. And look at the awards next year, guys. The Columbus Blue Jackets actually won the Stanley Cup. Individually here, Caulfield down the LA Kings, got the Air Rush Trophy, you got that Declare guy with the heart, Luke Hughes, another James Norris. I've never seen a defenseman dominate as much as he has. Just trying to see here, potentially, Bedard got any hardware, but does not look like it. We've actually got a bunch of new players too, like this Wasseling guy, Wyndham Reese Richard, this random Declare guy, Ted Lindsay, a lot of new names. All right, guys, so it's on the start of the 15th season. Same first line as before, Scantlebury left wing, Birdchild right wing. I think Scantlebury actually went up in rating. Now at 93 overall, pretty nuts, honestly. This Blackhawks team, I mean, the forward death might be a little bit better than before. A couple 84s offensively. They actually brought in the Zetterberg guy. I like the name for sure. Goaltending here. 84 Robins now the starter. Let's see if they can get to the playoffs or not. All right, guys, we're in the 15th season now. As you can see, the Blackhawks did make the playoffs. Unfortunately, lost in the first round of the Preds in five. Take a look at how Bedard did this year. He actually kind of popped off. 112 points, 60 goals as well. I feel like there's a chance he won the Marisha Shard. Maybe even the Art Ross Trophy was a plus 38. So doing everything he could to carry this team. Look at the awards here. Edmonton Oilers actually won the Stanley Cup. I was thinking one thing too. I don't think the Blackhawks have won a President's or Stanley Cup yet, which is kind of crazy. Like just no like team success. Bedard though does get his third Art Ross Trophy, which I think is pretty cool. Also got his third heart there. Just kind of tearing it up. Lane Hudson, James Norris. Okay. Finally not Luke Hughes. Bedard as well. Third Lady Bing in the last five years. Pretty dominant. So he's having a ton of individual success. There's no team success. Kind of similar to McDavid, I'd say. Nolan Allen actually on her team got to build Masterton. Kind of interesting since we did make the playoffs. Bedard there got the Ted Lindsay, and he did get the Marisha Shard, his third in the last five years. So yeah, Bedard just dominating the league at this point. We'll see if the team can actually follow suit. All right, guys, so it's on the start of the 16th season. And one thing you might notice here, Connor Bedard actually dropped in rating to a 93, which is kind of crazy coming off the best season of his career. Had 112 points last year. Like I just said, the best season he's had yet, and he drops in rating. So... That tells me he's probably just going to keep progressing no matter how he performs. He is 33 years old, so, 
you know, he's starting to get towards that 35 mark, which is actually the earliest a player can retire in game. I was also thinking too, for real to show you guys some of the playoff stats. So his first playoff was nuts, like averaged almost two a game after that. Pretty solid, seven and six, nine and 13, nine and six, seven and five. Definitely, you know, can't put any of these playoff exits on him, but uh, definitely need some more players to step it up around him if they actually want to win a cup. Scantleberry still looks sick, same with Birdchild, like that first line's nuts. Even the second, they brought in this Bob Baru guy, 90 overall, was the third overall pick by the Blue Jackets, playing with Cutter Gothe, who they also brought in, 34 years old now, Adam Sakura there. The bottom six actually doesn't look too bad. Now having said that, even though the forward looks a lot better this year, defensively, not great. Um, after the top pair, they actually have no one even in the 80s. Gold tightening, they have an 85 and an 84, so that's not too bad. Now, I will say, one thing I noticed in the later years is teams start to just get worse. Basically, when there's less, you know, current NHL players, there's not enough good players in the draft that grow. So, uh, maybe this team actually does have a shot, you know, Stanley Cup. Let's see. All right, guys, we just finished the 16th season. I want to show you the draft lottery because look at that. I don't think I've ever seen three of the top four picks all traded. I'm thinking these teams are all probably trading, like, future first, not thinking they'd be bad, but turns out they are. I will say, though, New York kind of got screwed, jumping from 9 to 1, and... Edmonton there gets their first pick. At this point, McDavid definitely has retired. You can see the Blue Jackets win back-to-back -back Stanley Cup. So good for them. I'll show you guys the playoff tree as the Blackhawks actually did make it back to the playoffs. Unfortunately, did not win it. They lost in seven there to the Winnipeg Jets. So, I mean, the Blackhawks just having no playoff success, although Connor Bedard keeps trying his best. Now, looking at the individual awards here, no R.S. Trophy for him this year or the heart. It's some random guy named Halpern. Bedard, though, does get his fourth lady bang in six years. So, Dude takes no penalties, plays a clean game, puts up points. Fantilli there with the con Smythe. See if uh, Bedard got anything else. Wow, Alex Ovechkin is now a coach of the Calgary Flames, and he got the Jack Adams. That's pretty cool to see. James Hayes is there with the Flames, got the Selkie, and no even Richard Shard for Bedard. So just the Lady Bang, but still, he's pretty much averaging an award a season at this point. And we'll take a look just to see how he did this year. Another 100-point campaign, 170 to be exact, with another 60-goal season. How many times has he hit 60 now? That's back-to-back -back years. He had a 59-1. These last two years are actually the only two years he hit 60, so he's starting to like get better, apparently, in his early 30s, even though, again, he's dropped a rating by one and now a 92. And I was curious, too, guys, where Bedard finished in total points. We got fifth there. You can see Eisenman, Rubrik, McCammy, and then this Halpern guy finished above him, and Halpern had 76 goals to Bedard's 60. That is just stupid. First overall pick in 2030, has pretty much perfect shot. All right, guys, so as I said, the 17th season, Connor Bedard's 34 years old there, and like I mentioned before, now 92 overall. He still has both Scantleberry and Birdchild on his wings. These guys are both in their early 30s now, but I mean, obviously it's working out of them playing on the line, so Blackhawks aren't breaking that up. I am curious, at this point, Bedard, wow, on the last year of that extension, paying him just under 13 million. So I'm gonna be very curious to see whether or not he finally leaves Chicago. I think they haven't really had much playoff success. I would like to see him go to contender, but does a contender have the money? We'll have to wait and find out. Second line, they lost Cutter Gothe. So the Smith, dude, who's only an 80, is playing the 2C between Barreau and Sakura. I mean, he doesn't look as great now. Same with the bottom six. Defensively, it's still also looking pretty weak. But again, we saw them make the playoffs last year. I think just the teams overall aren't quite as good this late in the franchise. So maybe they'll make it back again. All right, guys. So at the end of the 17th season, the Blackhawks there finished fifth last in the NHL. They're picking top five. I feel like Bedard's got to be on his way out. There's no way he can be happy with the team's success, having not made it past the second round his entire career so far. You can see right there the Carolina Hurricanes won the Stanley Cup. Wow, and look at this. Bedard didn't even have the most points this season. It was Birdchild. Bedard, though, did have 76, minus 13, dropped a ton in rating, now an 87. Again, it does kind of make sense with him about to turn 35. Still has his X factors though. And I think we've seen this game before. A guy like Bedard could be in the low 80s, but still performing. And we see that with Crosby, Ovechkin, Kane, those guys all the time. And now looking at the awards here, guys, Rubric actually, Art Ross Trophy in the heart. I'm just curious, Landy DuPont there, James Norris Trophy. Rubric also got Lady Banks. A lot of new names coming up. I'm just curious if Bedard got anything. Does not look to be the case. So we'll see if he moves anywhere this summer. I really do hope he goes to a new team. I think that'd just be a lot more fun, but We'll have to wait and see. And never mind, guys, I just checked and Bedard already signed an extension, 14.3 million for the next four years to stay with the Blackhawks. So the dude's choosing money over uh, success, which I guess is fair enough if that's what he's more concerned about. All right, guys, so it's on the start of the 18th season. And as you can see, Bedard has dropped 87 overall. He kept that rating after the start of the summer. He's got Scantleberry and Baru now on his two wings. And this Picard guy here, 18 years old, signed out overall, was just drafted fifth overall, 2040. You can see there he's got melee potential. So maybe he'll be a player for them. Matthew Potra actually joined the team. I mean, I don't know, this Blackhawks team, isn't looking the best. Defensively, they're even worse now. 
Hudson down to 84. I feel bad for Bedard. They just can't seem to build a squad around him. And here's the draft layer results, guys. The New York Rangers have just had so much luck, jumping from 10 to 2. And as you can see at the very bottom there, the Blackhawks just barely missed the playoffs. Uh, 14th worst in the league, so just a couple spots out. Dallas Stars there win the Stanley Cup. And Bedard there at 101 points, which I think is pretty impressive. Also, he's 35 now, so this is the first season where he could potentially retire. I'm looking at his X Factors too. They actually look to have changed. He still has Snipe. He has Quick Draw now, though, which makes sense with his face offs. He's also got the third eye, big rig, and elite edges. Wow. So, like, I think all of his X Factors changed except for Shock and Zone ability and the Snipe Superstar ability. Very interesting. So, I kind of like that. It's almost like he's sort of changed his game in his older years and honestly looks to have paid off for him like three of the last four years were the best years of his career three, they're three of the best five years of his career we'll say so we'll see whether or not he does retire if he keeps it up he had 50 goals again 101 uh, i'll take a look at the awards too like he's got an outside shot i think at the marie Richard. rubrek though gets the r rush trophy back to back landon dupont james norris maybe he's the next luke hughes rubrek also got lady bing so maybe he's the new face nhl not bedard he also got the Ted Lindsay, and then that Holpern guy got the Marisha Shard. We saw his shot. It was unbelievable. So Bedard, I think, at this point, just looking for a cup. Hopefully he doesn't retire uh, before he gets one, whether that's with the Blackhawks or another team. And look at this, guys. Making sure Bedard didn't retire, and actually Leo Carlson retires at the age of 36. Pretty early retirement for him. Was still 85 overall, and had over a point per game in his career, which is pretty impressive. All right, guys. So that's our the 19th season. Bedard's actually gone up in rating now, 89 overall at 36. Apparently he had that good of a season last year. On his left wing, still Scantleberry, Brew on the right wing. Look at the Blackhawks team. I mean, they got 87 Johansson, third line. I feel like, honestly, could probably just move one of their higher rated guys to the middle rather than kind of wasting him. Defensively, this is tough. Their top defenseman is Adam Jarechek, who's only an 81. Gold tiny, they got an 84 Robins. Wow. So. We'll see how they do. I don't really think they're making the plots of this defense, though. All right, guys. So, the results are in for this season. As you can see there, the Blackhawks are from 9 to 10. So, again, missing the playoffs. But Connor Bedard there continues to produce 93 points, 82 games. One shy of 50. It was a plus 15. 85 overall now, though. I don't think he retires. I really hope he can at least play out the rest of this contract and potentially get moved to a contender. Speaking of, Maple Leafs there win the Stanley Cup. Adam Fantilli, Art Ross Trophy, and the heart, of course, Played Bedard on the Canadian World Junior Team. Landon Dupont, third straight James Norris. Like I said, apparently the new Luke Hughes. I don't think Bedard's getting anything here. Only had 49 goals. And yeah, he does not. So uh, we'll see what happens next season. And look at this, guys. They just checked retired players. Luke Hughes calls it a career. The new Nicholas Lindstrom. 1,443 points in 1,499 games played. The dude got the Mike Medano treatment, apparently, being one game shy of 1,500. Looks like they have him in the AHL. But he actually did play... His final year with the Devils. And he did miss one game there in the regular season. Otherwise, would have hit 1,500. That's tough. Wow. Take a look at this, guys. For the first time in his career, Bedard's no longer the 1C of the Blackhawks. He's actually the 2C there behind this Zherdev guy. 27. Drafted second overall by the Canucks. They must have signed him as a free agent. Very interesting. They got Scantle Bay Burrow. Still in the first line wings. Bedard here is playing with Johansson and Renee. Hopefully, he can still produce there. Defensively, this Blackhawks team is still looking rough. Gold tiny, they got an 80 starter. What the heck? Bedard, though, is still on the first power play. Gonna be an interesting season for sure. I think he's got two years left now on that most recent deal he signed. 37. We'll see how much time he's got left. Wow, and look at this, guys. For the first time since drafting Connor Bedard first overall in 2023, the Blackhawks are again drafting first overall, jumping up from 8 to 1. I would really like to see them trade him. He's only got one year left on his deal now. Maybe they can retain 50%. I mean, that would be $7 million, so it probably doesn't happen, but who knows? Maybe there's a team out there that could take on the entire cap hit. And look at this. Even after being demoted to the second line, Bedard was still leading score there with 87 points, 82 games. And you can see, too, he's only playing on the team that was putting up points that wasn't a dash player. So I'm very curious to see what the Blackhawks do with Bedard this summer. Minnesota Wild there, I believe, got their first Stanley Cup. Individual awards here. I doubt Bedard's taking anything. Korchinski, our former number one, gets the James Norris with Ottawa. I really don't know what Blackhawks were thinking trading him away or at least you know letting him go in free agency take a look here yeah no awards for bedard let's see if he retires or not look at this guys adam fantilli calls it a career he of course was drafted third overall behind bedard so the fact carlson's gone who was drafted number two behind bedard fantilli's gone who was drafted number three behind bedard probably not long before bedard's retired macklin celebrini actually just retired at 37 was still an 85 there at the islanders that's kind of crazy looks like he played his entire career with them you've also got frank nazar retiring a former teammate there of bedard so 
He's still going. We'll see whether or not he actually makes it to 40. All right, guys. So that's the 21st season. As you can see, Bedard's back on the first line. He's actually playing left wing now, which is kind of funny. As you got the quick draw X Factor there with 96 face-offs. You compare that to Jared in the middle. He's got 91 face-offs. I feel like I'd probably still have Bedard in the middle, but good to see. You know, he is back on the first line. 38 years old now, which is the same age as Ovechkin is in the NHL. And obviously, we've seen Ovi fall off quite a bit this season. We'll see whether or not that happens to Bedard. Look at the rest of the Blackhawks roster. So the right wing position stack. The rest of it is okay. Defensively, they don't have a single defenseman in the 80s. Like, that's not good. Sam Dickinson there, down to 77 now at 37 years old. Gould Titans. They still got a decent starter and win handle there. He's 85. Is this a playoff team? I don't think so. Again, Bedard's on the last year of his most recent contract. I'm really hoping that they can trade him and, you know, give him a chance to win a cup somewhere else. All right, guys, the results are in. As you can see there, Chicago was the best team to not make the playoffs. They got 16th there in the lottery. They are really trying Bedard's last year. Maybe they know he's on his way out. So uh, we'll take a look and see how he did, how the team did. Winnipeg Jets there actually win the Stanley Cup. And look at that. Even at 38 years old, Bedard's still crushing it. 93 points. Only played 77 games. I think that might be like the most games he's missed his entire career. which just shows you how durable he's been. 93 points, 38 is pretty crazy. He no longer has the shock and his own ability. I just noticed that. 84 overall there. Potentials AHL top six. There's a chance he retires if his potential is now in the AHL. Obviously, we'll have to wait a couple moments here, but uh, that could happen. I'm curious to see Central Division. They had 89 points. Just missed out on the last spot by the Blues, who had 91. Calgary also had 89. Florida had 89, but they're in the East. Colorado, they're 88. So yeah, uh, pretty decent season for them, actually. Unfortunately, just got caught in a tougher division. Individual awards here. I doubt Bedard got anything. Gavin McKenna Hart Trophy there with the Rangers is pretty cool to see. Let's just take a look here. Like I said, I doubt Bedard got anything. No, he did not. So we're about to find out. Does Bedard call it a career as a pending free agent, or does he want to sign as somewhere new? No, he is not ready to recall it quits yet. He's looking for that Stanley Cup. Michkov, though, does retire at the Buffalo Sabres. And you guys can see he had an incredible career, well over a point per game, had 891 goals. He actually falls three shy of Gretzky's goal record. I feel like there's no way he would retire three shy of the record, but I mean, I don't know, maybe if it was due to injury or something, that could happen. Michael Misa also retires there at 37. And Kevin Korczynski, who I mentioned, uh, you know, should have been Bernard's longtime teammate. Blackhawks let him go. He retired at 40, so he also had a very long career. And as you can see here, he actually played the rest of his career with the Senators after leaving the Blackhawks. Even this season, he had 76 points in 78 games at 40 years old. He was still an 84 at 40. That is honestly so impressive. Honestly, I think if the Blackhawks don't let Korczynski leave, they might have had a Stanley Cup already. And check this out, guys. Round free agency here in 2044. And look at the salary expectations here for a lot of these players. It looks like if you're a 90 plus player, you're looking at 15 plus million, sorted by age, and there you have it. Connor Bedard, for the first time in his career at 30 years old, is a free agent. 84 overall, expecting 9.8 million. I can't wait to see where he signs. All right, guys, so now the start of the 22nd season. And of course, Bedard no longer with the Blackhawks. I was really hoping he would sign with his hometown Vancouver Canucks. Unfortunately, though, he did not. He actually signed with the Arizona Coyotes. Now, in 2044, are the Arizona Coyotes still going to exist, still going to be in the Arizona? If I was a betting man, I would probably say no, but we'll have to wait and see. As you guys can see here, Bedard playing second line center there behind Phaneuf. Down to 82 overall, but still producing as we saw last season. I mean, his stats are all really good. It's just his skating and physical have completely fallen off a cliff. Puck skills have also gone down quite a bit, but his shot is still there. It seems with the player progression as they get older, they really keep their senses. You can see there, offensive defense awareness, as well as their shot. So him being a sniper, I think he's going to perform here quite well in the sim. Now the rest of the Coyotes team after kind of the first five guys is pretty average, if not below average defensively. They do have, you know, an 84 there in Oshie. That's about it. Gold tiny, they got an 86 Toms, who's pretty good. So We'll see whether or not this team can make the playoffs. I really hope they do, but Dari can potentially win one Stanley Cup in his career. Now, they do have him playing second line power play, which makes no sense to me. Uh, he should definitely be playing on that top unit over this, like, random 80 overall Merniques guy. Also, guys, I almost forgot, but in terms of his contract, he signed a two-year deal there at just under $8 million. Will he play out the entire contract? Let's find out. And look at these lottery results here, guys. You'll see Arizona's picking 10. Bedard just can't catch a break. And Chicago picking 14 is with the Pittsburgh Penguins pick. The Chicago Blackhawks actually made the playoffs after trading away Connor Bedard. So I'll show you guys that playoff tree there. Luckily, they didn't win the Stanley Cup. It was the Tampa Bay Lightning. If the Blackhawks won the Cup their first year after Bedard, I would have felt so bad for them. So they got knocked out in the second round there to the Blues. 
after beating the Jets in the first round. Of course, the Coyotes there did not make the playoffs. And at 39 years old, Connor Bedard was still the best player on the Coyotes. He put up 95 points during 82 games. He had less than 18 minutes of ice time a night as well since he was on that second line and still outperformed everybody. Plus 19. I mean, this guy, get him some help. He's literally doing everything he can, but just not getting any luck here in the sim. In terms of the awards, I don't think he's going to get one, but you never know. We'll take a quick look here through. Most of these names now are just all made up players. And yeah, no Bedard. All right, guys, so let's start the 23rd season. As you can see, Bedard's got demoted to the third line center role after leading the team in points last year. I know he's 81 overall, but I feel like there's this fourth guy here who's 81, second line left wing. At least put Bedard there. He does have quick draw though, so at least they have him in the second position. He still has 96 face-offs, which is pretty ridiculous. 96 poise. Awareness stats are both really high. The shot, it's just, again, the skating, the physical have done way down. 40-year-old Bedard, still looking for his first Stanley Cup. Uh, this Coyotes team, I mean, with him playing 3C, could potentially give him a ton of depth, but just like the Blackhawks, no real defense on this team. As I mentioned, I think later years in the franchise, this is a very common occurrence with most teams. Hopefully, Bedard's still in the power play. They actually moved him up to power play one at least, so... Let's see how he does in his 40-year-old season. Look at this, guys. Lottery results are in. Arizona there picking 12th. So again, Bedard not making the playoffs. And I don't see Chicago. So I think Chicago is somehow potentially doing better without Connor Bedard, which really makes no sense. The Devils there win the Stanley Cup. Let's take a look at the playoff tree. And yeah, Blackhawks did make the playoffs. They lost in the first round of the Oilers, but still, making it both years after letting go Bedard is kind of crazy to see. Now, this was Bedard's last year on that two-year deal with the Coyotes. I'm hoping he'll go for at least one more here, try and get the cup. I think if he doesn't, he'd probably go down as the best player ever to not win it. He had 58 points this year in 77 games, so he has slowed down quite a bit there at 40, minus 18. Potential there still AHL is overall 77. Okay, so yeah, I think Bedard might be hanging him up here. We'll take a look at the awards. Maybe he won like something, Lady Bing maybe. No, that goes to Janssen there. Take a look at all the rest. And yeah, no awards there for Bedard. We'll sim forward a couple days. I think this might be it for him. He's 77 overall now, but you never know. I've seen guys hang around longer than they should before. Take a look at retired players. Bedard does call it a career. Wow. 2,070 points in 1,866 games played. So right now they put him number two all time behind Wayne Gretzky, but I'll have to take a look in game. There's a chance for instance, McDavid actually retired with more points than that. Also has broken Wayne Gretzky's goal record. We'll see whether or not, you know, Ovechkin and Matthews set a higher one, but that is pretty crazy. Like 2,070 points. Again, I feel bad for the guy. Not only did he never win a Stanley Cup, he never even made a Stanley Cup final. I don't think he made a conference final for that matter, unless there's like one year I'm missing. So all of this, you know, performance, production, I guess at the end of the day, no one really to blame but himself. He could have not signed an extension with the Blackhawks, gone to a better team, demanded a trade, but the best he ever did was a second round appearance, which I think only happened a couple times. So really, really, you know, strange career there for Conor Bedard. I'll make sure to add up all the awards he's won, show you guys them at the end. But as I mentioned, next year I actually would like to take a look at the record book to see where he finished all time. Also, you can see how many Chicago records he set. I feel like he probably passed Patrick Kane in most of those. So uh, points, 1,917. He does have the lead for Blackhawks. Also has the most assists, 942. Games played, 1,700. Penalty minutes, he didn't pass Chris Chelia. Goals there, he also has 975. Looking at the season records here, Conor Bedard, most goals in a season with 60. But he did not get the most points uh, in a season. That was actually Dan Savard with 131. Same with assists there as well, 87. Rookie records here, Conor Bedard had the most goals at 48. Not the most points though. That goes to Steve Larmer there, who had 90. Kind of crazy, Conor Bedard had the most goals at 48, but didn't put up 90 points. I think he had... 88 points his rookie season, so only 30 assists. And look at this, guys. I went to look at the NHL records. Accidentally had it on rookie first. And Conor Bedard has the fifth most goals ever for an NHL rookie at 48. Career records here. Conor Bedard beat out Patrick Marlowe for the most ever games played, 1866. Playing until he's like 42 or whatever, barely missing any games. Like, I think at most he would miss, you know, five games in a season. That'll do it for you. In terms of most goals, he does have the record, 1,043. Ovechkin did beat the Gretzky record 961. Same with Dackel there who had 950. Michkov again finishing three shorts pretty funny. I'm surprised Matthews actually didn't make it onto that top five points. He did finish second there behind Gretzky. Crosby, McDavid nowhere to be seen. So they must have retired maybe a little bit early. Assists there you can see still Gretzky has. And I just noticed guys Kevin Korchinski finished fifth all the time in assists. So I'm pretty confident the Blackhawks held on to him. The duo of him and Bedard definitely would have won a Stanley Cup. Shutouts, 50 goal seasons. Bossy 9, Bedard does not make the top 5. Ovechkin though, 
tied Gretzky there. 100 point seasons. McDavid, third on that list with 10, and still doesn't have like top five points. Like I said, must have retired a little bit early, but what a career for Connor Bedard. I still can't believe the dude <laughs> never made it out of the second round. Like, gotta be one of the most, you know, unlucky situations ever for an individual player's career. Luckily, though, he did have a ton of player success. So hopefully during his NHL career, Bedard at least won a couple gold medals at the Olympics with Team Canada to go along with his two World Junior Golds. And now speaking of his accolades, guys, here's a final look at everything Conor Bedard accomplished in his career. Obviously, already saw his stats, and that was, of course, good for first all-time games played, first all-time goals, second all-time in points. He won one Calder, two Art Ross trophies, two Hearts, two Ted Lindsay's, two Marisha Shards, two Selkies, four Lady Bings. Unfortunately, though, never won a Stanley Cup. And he had career earnings there of 234 million, which is almost 100 million more than Sidney Crosby's career earnings. And he's currently first all time in NHL player career earnings. So uh, Conor Bedard goes down without a doubt as the highest paid NHL player of all time. Obviously, tons of other stats to go with it, but missing the most important thing a Stanley Cup.